States, I am very, very grateful to know her very well on a personal level. She is a firecracker. She is an excellent mother. She has a powerful, powerful story. She is a lover and she is an extremely successful, smart businesswoman that her team says just loves on everyone. She is a lover, a hard lover, and incredibly intelligent. And she is here to share with you. Will you please help me welcome to the stage, Kelly Rose Sarno. I tell you how excited I am to be on the stage and sharing it with my beautiful upline, Morgan and Zoe. They have some amazing content to follow on up. So you're in for a wild ride. It's kind of strange being up here, to be honest with you. I'm used to like a big room. I feel like this is more nerve wracking because I can actually see every single one of your faces. <laughs> I'm going to teach you about branding today. Most importantly, connecting with your why. But before we do that, I want to tell you a quick story about me. So I'm from the United States and as a little girl, I grew up what most people would consider pretty poor. I lived in, you know, apartments. I always wished to have like stairs in my house, something very simple. Share bedrooms with my mom because that's all we could afford was a two bedroom apartment. And so my love of travel happened at a very young age. I always wanted to just travel the world, see everything that I could. And I had to do that from the comfort of my own bedroom. And so what I did is I started a postcard collection and I collected postcards from all over the world, random places. I'm talking like Taiwan and like, I don't even know, the Vatican, I have a stack of them. And in my life, I have moved close to a hundred times just because that's how my life happened. And the one thing I always had to dream about, my, my love of travel, was this postcard collection. And as I became an adult and moved into my adult life, that postcard collection became a memory of my past. And I never thought I'd see it again, because my collections of when I was young are very small. And so I called my mom when I was asked to speak in London, and I was like, Mom, I need the postcard collection. I need it. And one of the obsessions in this collection was this bridge. You guys know about this bridge, right? That's Tower Bridge, and as a little girl, I thought every princess in the world lived there. <laughs> and all I wanted to ever do was to just visit it, let alone have dinner on top of it. I found that postcard before I came here to London. So excited. It was in this like beat up old Ziploc bag, underneath a million things, and I finally got to see part of my why and part of my dream come true when I had dinner on top of that bridge. I was like, you guys, freaking blubbering mess. I was like, everybody thought I was crazy on the boat. I'm like, you don't understand. I love this bridge. And I was like, that's cool, Kelly. I'm like, no, you don't even know. This is the first time in my life I actually didn't share that on social media. I was waiting to share that with you because it's such a powerful part of what we're going to learn today, okay? So I'm going to try to deliver this content to you and not bust out my British accent. <laughs> well, let me give you a quick little introduction of myself. Um, like I said, I'm from the U.S. This is my beautiful family. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys may be following me on Facebook. This is my husband, Sean, um, my oldest, Declan, and my youngest, Everett. I'm so lucky and blessed that I get to do this and be here for you, and my husband sacrifices and stays back to make sure that my babies are taken care of. We've been together for the greater part of 20 years, and like the theme has been with Shalene, and then on stage, I really do need more than one lifetime to spend with this man. I'm so, so lucky. Okay, so who has ever heard of the term, if your why doesn't make you cry, it's not big enough? You ever hear that? Well, I'm here to tell you, I don't believe that's true. <laughs> okay, I've never cried about my why. How crazy is that? I have realized that over the years, the four and a half years that I've been with this business, that your why has to change, you know? And it has to change often. Who is actually connected with their why? Who's found it difficult to find the reason why they're supposed to be in this business? Okay, that's what we're gonna work on today. I'm gonna back up you guys only because my notes are on this one. So we'll just stick here, okay? You can just look at me in a bridge the whole time we're here, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna teach you how to connect with people about your why. I'm gonna teach you how to share with people about your why. And I'm going to help you, and what I think is most importantly, profit off of that. 
And that kind of feels a little icky when you say it out loud, right? You're like, well, here's my amazing story. Here's all the struggle that I've been through. Here's everything about me. And now buy things from me, right? Doesn't that feel like a little bit icky to be like, this is such an important piece of me. I don't want you to buy into my product. I want you to buy into my vision. I want you to buy into my dream. And I want you to buy into my belief in you that you too can be in this very spot, okay? All right. When I was first chosen for the subject, <laughs> I looked at Marissa and I was like, really? <laughs> like my why of all things? And it wasn't until this very moment that I realized, okay, I get it now, it's fine. I was like, give me like building pinks or systems. And you know what, those are the things that I'm comfortable with. Those are the things that people hear from me all the time. That's not something that gets me out of my comfort zone, okay? So sharing my why has been something that's honestly relatively new to me. My real, my real deep, deep why, because like I've said, it's changed over so many years, okay? So my very first why when I joined this business was free makeup, Facebook, and my sponsor once said to me that she was gonna make money off of my friends. <laughs> and I was like, I'd rather make money off of my friends than you make money off of my friends. So that was a really easy thing to click join and spend $99. How many people in this room joined just for like the kit or makeup or a discount? Keep your hand up and look around you guys. Seriously, take that in for a second, okay? Look at who's raising their hand on this stage. Imagine if a Kelly Rose Sarno joined your team. That'd be pretty sweet, wouldn't it? I'm still waiting for one too. <laughs> but anyways, what is a why? Right? What is that? What is it? We hear it everywhere in network marketing, especially here because, I mean, it's called the power of you. We're talking about our next convention is the why. What is that? It's something that drives you, okay? It's something that gives you a reason for showing up every single day. Can you think of what really would drive you to wake up every single day and share something about yourself? What is it? Is it your kids? Not everyone has kids. Is it that you have a dream to travel? Is it that you have a financial motivation? And let me tell you what, you guys, get rid of the fact that you might be financially motivated being a bad thing. I am insanely financially motivated. I grew up with nothing. So I'm on a mission to provide my children with everything, okay? It's not a bad thing to be financially motivated. It's gonna be your reason why you don't quit. Okay, that's really powerful. And those are really three things that can help you define that. What's gonna get you out of bed every morning? What's gonna keep you from quitting? Okay, and what's gonna drive you to do that? I've quit before. I've quit this business. Crazy, right? I didn't even know what I was doing. I hit blue status my very first month. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So everyone's like, oh my God, you hit blue status. You know, and I'm like, cool. I had no idea what it was. I was pregnant with my son and I was like, cool, this is like a little purple card that I can go run to Target and buy things for my unborn baby that my husband can't track in our bank account. <laughs> you know? Seriously, you guys, I came to my husband with like $300 in my bank account and a credit score of almost the same. Okay, so for me to spend money excessively was like not cool. Um, I don't even think he knew about the, pur the purple card till I like actually quit my job. But anyways, it was about making money for me, you know? I didn't know who Derek and Melanie were. I had no idea who Shalene was, who now I consider one of my closest friends. Nothing about the mission of Uplift and Power Validate. Nothing about the Unique Foundation. Absolutely nothing. All I knew is if I posted a selfie on Facebook, I would make some cash. It was awesome, you guys. Facebook and makeup, like how easy is that? And that's basically how easy our business really is. But you've got to dive deeper into that. It wasn't until after I had my son, um, and I went on unpaid maternity leave. And I battled some serious postpartum anxiety. I wasn't ready to be a mom. I wasn't ready to be a breastfeeding mother. Sorry for the men in the room. I know there's some of you guys in here. But it was a tough journey for me for probably the first three months of being a mom. Really tough. I still will say to this day, I don't think I really even connected with both of my babies until they were six months old. And I think the more that we talk about these things, the more that we connect with people. Right? And this started to become part of my why. To help other women who felt like that, but felt ashamed saying it. You know, it's powerful to share your story on social media because that is when we start to transform into that why. So again, 12 weeks unpaid maternity leave. We had just bought a house <clears throat> and it, it wasn't easy. We were very financially strapped at that point. 
I went back to work and I said, you know what, this just isn't for me anymore. If I'm gonna be a mom, if I'm gonna be present, I can't do it raising someone else's kids. I was a nanny. They were having their fourth child. It was so overwhelming mentally, you guys. I needed a way out. And I looked at my husband and I said, I think I have the ticket. This whole unique thing, it's pretty cool. I made some great money that first month, that one month, you know? The month before I made this decision, I was paid as yellow status, okay? We sat down, we made a 90 day plan, and I said, at the end of that, if I can replace my income as a nanny with this business, can I quit my job? So I don't care how you replace it, just replace it. Your health is more important to me. So we did just that. I sat down, I hustled for 90 days, and within 90 days, I was orange status after being paid as yellow status, and I quit my full-time job. It's pretty amazing. Thank you. It's okay, you can go out. <laughs> but this is when I realized my why was changing. You know, I was now on to my second one, and that was to connect with women, to teach them that they too can have this ability to grow something bigger and to develop into the person that they knew they were always intended to be, but maybe for some reason, whether it be any internal programming, pre-programming from their childhood, told them they couldn't. You know, I realized I had a powerful platform to stand on. And if I just connected to this business a little bit more, then I was gonna be able to flourish that idea, that why, and it was to help others. But again, for that next year, it was still kind of all about me. <laughs> I was working towards black status and I realized that I was very financially motivated. And that black status just seemed like something I needed to reach. You know, it was about me still, you guys. I was focused on the prize. I was focused on that black status. But like you may have heard in some of your trainings here, <coughs> you know, once you get there, that's not it. It doesn't end there. There's still so much more to go. Black status is the first entry level of black status. We got black status level one, I'm proud to be there. Black status level two, and we still have to conquer that black status level three. And this is when I realized that this has to be about others. Not only in your personal business, but also in your team business. We have to learn to have a servant mindset, right? Over a selfish mindset. And I was working very selfishly for a while. Okay? We need to learn to have a business mindset and not an employee mindset. Think about that. Business over employee. You do not work for you. You work for yourself. And everybody on your team works for themselves too. You have to work like you are a business owner, not like you are an employee waiting for people to give you direction, waiting for people to help you connect to your why. Okay? You have to have a leadership mindset over a management mindset. Okay? You are allowed to step into that leadership. You don't have to wait for anyone else. I heard today in our exclusive training, um, I believe it was Leanne who said, and I know Eric Warren has said this too, that a really good, strong upline is actually a downfall for you. <laughs> and to be honest with you, sometimes I feel like I am that person. You know, I'm looked up to and my team loves me and I come up with all these systems and I come up with all these trainings, but what I'm not allowing people to do is flourish. What I'm not allowing people to do is to create their own, you know, and you have to do that. You have to run this like a business owner, not like an employee, and also not manage your team, but inspire and empower your team. Okay, that was a really, really tough lesson for me to learn, but as I did, I started on my journey to black status level one, okay, which is pretty cool. All right, we're going to move over. Okay, so let's talk about your why. Okay, so we are going to shape and build your why together, okay? And it's gonna follow up with Morgan and with Zoe of how to create content with that and to move forward with your why. So what I want you to do, and write this down, is one of the first action steps I want you to take when you leave here, you just get to keep staring like you babies. Um, what I want you to do when you leave here, and I always tell people, don't do this all at the same time as your team. You know, like when I do something for a team, I like to kind of space it out a little bit because if you share any type of network with your, with your team, it's going to look ridiculous when you guys are like all posting the same thing at the same time. It's like, oh, they were at a unique convention. So over the next few days, what I want you to do is I want you to share this, okay? And I want you to ask your audience, when you think of me, what three things come to mind? Okay. How many people here follow me on Facebook? Okay, cool. Um, do you speak English? Yes? When you think of me, what's one thing that comes to mind? 
My hair. Very good. Wanda, when you think of me, what comes to mind? Your children. My babies. Anyone over here follow me on Facebook? What comes to mind when you think of me? Powerful. There we go, you guys. Powerful, my hair, and my babies. If there are two things that absolutely describe me and my brand, it's this mop on my head, which is half fake, okay? <laughs> and my babies. These are the two things I probably shared the most on Facebook. And the word powerful means so much to me. I actually just posted that today on Facebook about just my outfit. I was like, this outfit makes me feel powerful, you know? And I teach women to breathe that into themselves. And I tried to breathe that into them as well, that they are powerful, that you are made for more, that you are brave, that you are beautiful, and that you can absolutely accomplish anything. That is my brand. And it is my life. And now do you see why you can connect those together and profit off of that, okay? I'm gonna share everything about my babies. I'm gonna be smart about it. How many people are afraid to post their babies on Facebook? It's okay, put your hand up. I was too for quite a while. How many people do not have a public Facebook page? Okay, I see you girl. It's scary. It is, but let me just explain something to you. There's a little blue button that says private on Facebook, and we have this sense of security that when we press that blue button, our life is private. And let me tell you, it's not. Anybody with $100 can break into anything on social media, okay? I promise you, there's fake accounts made of me almost daily. You just need to be smart about these things, and I just want to take a second to talk about that because I know how scary it is to share your babies, and if you don't have babies, bear with me for just one second. Um, be smart. Don't check into places when you're there with them. Don't post a picture of your baby running around naked, okay? If your baby's sick, that's not okay to post because they probably wouldn't give permission to you 10 years down the line to post that picture of them sick, okay? So just be smart. Share the good things. Share the things about your babies that bring you joy. Share how you work your business with your babies in it. That right there is your why and being able to profit of it, off of it in your story. Okay, this is going to allow you to have common ground with people to open up conversation. Okay, so too often we lead into this business to sell a product or to offer the opportunity too quickly. You know, you have to warm that conversation up. You have to be conversational with the people, the people that you're talking about because that will allow you to have these greater conversations in allow them to watch you create your brand on social media. And when you're creating that brand, they honestly will come to you about the product or it allows that conversation to more naturally flow there, okay? Share things that you learn. Share things about when you travel. Share things that do make you feel powerful. If you had a moment as a man or as a woman that made you feel like you could conquer the world, share that so that somebody else can hear that story because trust me, they need to hear that story, okay? When you do, when you pick those three things, those multiple things, it allows you to be multi multifaceted, okay? Um, another thing I love to do is, if you've ever scrolled back in your conversation with your sponsor, it's very interesting. I've been in this business for four and a half years. My sponsor's no longer with the company and Every once in a while, I'll scroll way back in our conversations on Facebook Messenger, and I'm like, how did she sponsor me? You know, because I want to sponsor me. How did she do that? Girl, oh, God bless her. Literally took her like six months to get me to do this. She was like, how about the kit? I'm like, nah, my husband won't let me spend the $100. Who hears that, right? Uh, how about a party? Nah, I don't want to bug my friends. Who hears that? on and on and on and on you guys for like six months we tried to meet up like seven times just to get the mascara in my hands and then finally once i did and i finally did a party and i finally talked to my husband or maybe i just bought myself a christmas present it's fine i joined the company you know so how did they do it what did she say to attract someone like you how many people in this room would love to have a you on your team right how did you get into this business? Go check that out. I think it'll really surprise you, okay? It might be your most powerful recruiting tool. Okay, I'm skipping ahead. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave you with three things, okay? That's <coughs> not the slide I want, I want the next slide. Okay, <laughs> okay, so this is really scary. I wrote it down on my little postcard because I wanted to make sure that you guys had this. I have my three whys, okay? 
My first why was fun-free makeup. My second why, I wanted to quit my job. And now my why has changed into serving others, okay? What is yours? What's gonna get you out of bed in the morning? What's gonna drive you? And what's gonna allow you never to quit, okay? It's gonna be real uncomfortable. It's gonna be so scary, like so scary, you guys. But like a wise woman on my team, Robin Dillon, once taught me, we're gonna do it scared, we're gonna do it afraid, we're gonna do it anyways, okay? We are not going to let judgment come in. We're gonna have empathy for others, okay? When people judge me, that's not my problem. What you think of me, that's not my opinion either, guys. I don't have to worry about that. But what I do need to do is have empathy for someone's insecurities that's gonna give me a hard time for posting something on Facebook, okay? I need to have empathy for somebody that wants to be brave enough to shut me down in a comment, okay? I need to have empathy for them and I need to rise above that. And we all need to practice that more because when we all do better together, we are gonna be a more powerful force, okay? We've all heard from Rachel Hollis, other people's opinions of you are none of your business. That's probably one of the biggest quotes that changed my mentality of how I share my why, how I share my vision, and the things that I love to pour into others, okay? And then my favorite is be unapologetically confident, ladies and gents, honestly. It is okay to be confident. It is not okay to be cocky. There's a big difference there, okay? Let that light shine from within you. Be confident and share that with others. There's somebody out there that needs to connect with that. There's somebody that needs to feel your warmth, your shine, and your greatness. Do not, promise me, do not deprive this world of your why, your story, and your greatness. Thanks, guys. Woo!